Louisiana Beer Reviews, Bostiles Trupel Carmelite. Trupel Carmelite um, was introduced in 1996. It is a Belgian beer, brewed in Belgium. Uh, both steels are the same people that produce uh, Hovel Coac, and they also produce a beer wine hybrid, but I don't think I'd be interested in trying that. Um, this beer is 8.4% alcohol. It uses three grains, barley, wheat, and oats, and the hops are Styrian hops. It won a silver medal in the two, at the 2002 World Beer Cup and a gold medal at the 1998 World Beer Cup. This beer gets a world-class score on Beer Advocate. The bros say it's world-class, their highest possible score. A 99 out of 100 on Rape Beer and a 100 out of 100 for the style. So, how about that? A three-grain beer still brewed after a 17th century recipe from the old Carmelite Monastery of Dendermond. Okay. Well, let's check it out. 100% nat natural ale, that's good. Imbru imported by Artisanal Imports, Austin, Texas. You can check out their website. And you can also check out Belgian Best Belgian Special Beers.be. That's a website for this. Uh, brewed and bottle. Okay, best before September 26, 2014. So we got over a year left on it. Good to see him put the date. Really nice to see that. 11.2 ounce ripoff bottle. Oh well, too bad, so sad. Let's check it out. It's a living beer. It's <laughs> look at all that. Look at all that liveliness. Look at that smoke here at 7:30 in the morning. They said to tip the glass, and I did not. Okay. I saw that on the website. Oh, well, I'm sorry I didn't pour it right. Well, they were just basically saying that to uh, to get the proper head and to not have the yeast go in it. But I'm going to pour the yeast in it. Okay. Um, clear, bubbly, yellow-golden appearance, or from that direction. Well, it's still yellow-golden. Um, the sun is not quite above the structures yet uh, definitely some little particles in there looks kind of like a uh, champagne check out the aroma <clears throat> typical aroma for this style um, it's yeasty it has some slight banana really You could say bubble gum, but it's got that sugary sweetness. A um, little bit of a hop zing. If you ever have a mimosa with brunch, it has sort of that kind of uh, aspect to it. And some candiness. Oh, well. <clears throat> Smells nice. Let's go with the flavor. No added spices, by the way. Just the barley, the oats, and the uh, wheat, and then the uh, hops. The yeast gives it all these little funny flavors. It's sweet. It's grainy. <laughs> you know, you get to 30 different grains. It's bready, but sweet bread, you know. Uh, like a sweet roll. It's got the zing from the yeast. It's got a slight banana, a slight coriander. A pepperiness. Um, You know that kind of sugared fruit they put in fruit cake? It kind of has that um, 
note. The mouthfeel is medium and very prickly. The carbonation is so prominent. You can see all those tight little bubble streams. <laughs> um, it does have some grain husk though in the background. And, and you'll get that grain husk thing with your high gravity malt liquors also. And it's probably a terrible thing to bring up, but you do get that that background grain husk with uh, with this the triple carmelite and the um, St. Ides High Gravity. Um, and it, this is pretty crisp, and the, the St. Ides is uh, crisp also, but uh, you know, with the St. Ides, you don't have all the other yeast components, the, the fruit and the, the candied fruit, but you, you'll get the breadiness. But this is more complex than that. Although this is much more expensive, this would be about five dollars a bottle. That would be about you might be able to find that for dollar seventy-five a bottle, and uh, you get more bang per per ounce uh, relative to the price paid per ounce. But anyhow, um, this is a real treat here. You can really feel, you can really taste it, in a way taste, but feel the uh, flavors when you exhale. The finish is dry, champagne-like, not super dry though. Uh, it's easy going really, the alcohol does not present itself so so much, and I was mentioning that other beer, that, that high gravity lager, you do pick up the alcohol in that, I'll tell you, that's, it's uh, harsh in that way. This is not harsh really, except for that grain husk. And um, the drinkability is not bad, and that could get you in trouble. Although the carbonation would, the carbonation kind of keeps you from doing the chug because it just you can feel it building up in your in your insides, and that's not the greatest feeling in the world. Like you got this big burp coming, you know. But uh, is this world class? I don't know. I mean, it's oh, there comes the air conditioner. I should have gone faster. Uh, they talk about it in this book that I bought, uh, 300 Beers to Have Before You Die. They were bringing it up and they were bragging on it. I'm not sure that it's world class, though. I say it's more like, um, like an, you know, I, I got a lot of foam in my mouth and I'm even picking up some metallic. That's strange. Yeah, metallic, like if I was drinking Red Dog from a can. Now, that's not really, I don't think, what they're shooting for. Um, yeah, that's really weird. Anyway, sorry to bring up those uh, low, uh, low price, I guess you'd say, or low uh, budget beers, but... Um, I have to bring. I have to mention what comes into my head. You know, I, I want to be honest with these reviews and not just try to put a bunch of BS out there. And try to get some credibility in the beer connoisseur community. I have to grade it as is. Um, and I've had some of the great beers in the world for sure. Um, but is it really worth the price? I, I don't know. I'm gonna give it an A. I can't decide A or A plus. Let's. Needless to say, it's excellent. Okay. All right. On its own, and you factor out the price, it's an A. It's most excellent. But I don't know. The metallic is strange. The grain husk is strange. The price ain't good. But um. If you're going to worry that much about price, just don't buy this kind of stuff. 
I guess you could say that. Um, but usually when I drink beers, the more I drink them, the more I like them. So I probably enjoy this more as I sip it down. You know, I've switched the bottom, and I didn't really see any kind of big cloud come in there. I, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, it's kind of it's descending a little bit, but it's not super cloud, cloudish, cloudy. Um, but I, I'll say that's the best I. I'll say eight. I'm gonna say, hey, that's it, most excellent. Well, hey, if a beer is most excellent, that ain't, that's not bad, right? But anyway, I, I'm, I'm glad I tried it. So, Les Les Bon Temps Roulet, this is a most excellent beer. <clears throat> and I'm gonna end this re review. And I got a lot of thinking to do with this one. This has got me a little disturbed. Just because of what I thought of when I drank it. And, all of the considerations of it. But anyway, and I'm going to end this review by saying y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.